a very special Sabbath. We're here to, um, we're having a <clears throat> prayer time. We're, like Barbara mentioned, we're in the search for a new pastor, a senior pastor, a permanent pastor. And so we're going to have a time for prayer. And uh, we'd like for you to stay for that. And so um, this morning, the message <clears throat> is on guidance. Yes, it's a very special Sabbath. We want the Lord to guide in the search, not only in the search for a new pastor, but also in our own lives. There's needs here. I'm sure we all have, would like for God to guide us in decisions we want to make or have to make. And so we want to do all possible to get the Lord's guidance so we could have success <clears throat> and he could help us. So this morning, we're going to be looking at Abraham and his servant. <clears throat> they were searching for, or Abraham's servant was searching for a wife for Isaac, for the son of Abraham. And uh, I think we could learn something from what this man did in his search for a wife, <clears throat> excuse me, for a wife for his master's uh, son. There's some principles there that we could learn. And it was a remarkable experience. I mean, God gave him an answer, and it was uh, short of a miracle. So he, asked, he was asked by his master to go to his homeland, to his relatives, to find a wife for his son, Isaac. Now, the uh, servant, he says in his own words that God was the one that led him in this long journey to find a wife for his servant. And uh, <clears throat> so it's so important to, for us to make sure whatever decision, whatever we're looking for, help from God, that we are led by God in making our decisions <clears throat> and finding out what we need. So um, I want to invite you to open your Bible so you could follow on the uh, screen. Genesis 24, starting with verse 1. Here we have a portion of the story. Abraham was not very old. Well, he was very old when he had um, Isaac. Now he's very old. And the Lord had blessed him in every way. He said to the senior servant in his household, the one in charge of all he had, Put your hand under my thigh. I want you to swear by the Lord, the God of heaven, the God of the earth, that you will not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I am living, but will go to my country and my own relatives and get a wife for my son Isaac. The servant asked him, what if the woman is unwilling to come back with me to this land? Shall I then go take your son back to the country you are from? Abraham, make sure that you do not take my son back there, Abraham said. The Lord, the God of heaven, who brought me out of my father's household and my native land and who spoke to me and promised me on oath, saying, to your offspring, I will give this land. <clears throat> he will send his angel before you. He says he, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> he will send his angel before you. And the Lord just did, he did that. And that you, may, you can get a wife for my son from there. If the woman is unwilling to come back with you, then you will be released from this oath of mine. Only do not take my son back there. <clears throat> so the servant put his hand under the thigh of his master Abraham and swore by an oath to him concerning this matter. You know, how do we, how are we, how do we know 
that we are receiving guidance from God when um, in making a decision, either a personal decision or it could be like now we're um, wanting a, the God to guide us in a decision. We uh, are asking for a new pastor. You know, people have different concepts and impressions of how God leads people to make a, de a decision. And um, some people go by impressions before making that decision. We're going to learn today. We're going to learn from this story how we go about making a decision and making sure that God is leading in that decision. <clears throat> you know, there was, there's a story in Reader's Digest I thought was quite interesting in making a decision. <clears throat> Excuse me. A, a, a flight, flight attendant, a flight attendant, she spent a, spent a week of vacation up in the Rockies. And um, she was captivated by the mountain peaks, the uh, that beautiful smell, the clear skies, and the beautiful smell of the pine trees. And um, also, she was charmed by this bachelor, eligible bachelor, who owned and operated a cattle ranch. And he lived in a log cabin. He lived in a log cabin. At the end of the week, this Mr. Wonderful proposed to this flight attendant. And but it, it had all happened so quickly that the woman decided to return home and to her job as a flight attendant, <clears throat> feeling that she would somehow be guided to make the right decision. The next day, while in flight, <clears throat> she found herself wondering what to do. To perk herself up, she stopped in the restroom, splashed some cool water on her face, and there was turbulence, and a sign in the restroom cabin went on. A sign went on in the restroom. Please return to your cabin. And she did. She returned to the cabin in the Rocky Mountains. That was her way of, you know, feeling the guidance. So the story does not... This story does not demonstrate the way we should make decisions. But there's a lot of people that go by impressions, <clears throat> desires. There's a lot of ways that people make decisions. So it's important to keep in mind that Abraham, <clears throat> his servant, acknowledged, you know, what he did. He acknowledged in his own words that he was being led by God. God was the one that was leading him to find a wife a partner for his son Isaac. We also must acknowledge the importance of God's leading in our own lives. If we want to find success, an answer to our prayers, to what we're, we would like. <clears throat> so what I'd like to do this morning, I'd like to impact, from this story I want to unpack four important principles to follow. <clears throat> Principle number one, knowledge and obedience to God's word. It's really important for us to, like Abraham, he was guided by knowledge and obedience to God's word. The word is our, the Bible is our rule of faith. That's our first fundamental belief as a church, the word, the Bible. Now, his search for a wife isn't based on human impressions like we saw in that story or desires, rather, <clears throat> directed by his knowledge of God's word. Abraham knew God's word. That is why in verses 3 and 4, he insists that Isaac's wife be from his own relatives and not from the local people, the Canaanites. Why did Abraham insist on this condition? <clears throat> because he knew enough of God's word to know that God wouldn't bless a marriage to a Canaanite woman. God had never given it specific instructions or directions to whom Isaac was to marry. But this, this, this does, not, does not mean that God's word had no direction to give. In earlier times, Abraham, God had revealed to Abraham that the 
Canaanites were wicked. And their future, in the future, they were going to be judged for the way they lived. Well, that didn't come till the time of Joshua, much later. But God had given them and revealed to him that his son should not marry a, a Canaanite. And so that alone, that alone was reason for, in other words, that was not an option for him to marry a Canaanite. That wasn't in God's plan. <clears throat> so Abraham gave his servant specific instructions because he was determined to keep God's word. What God had revealed to him, what did God reveal to him? Isaac must not marry a Canaanite woman, and he must not leave the promised land, the land that God was going to give the Israelites. He said, go to, he was to go look for someone among his own relatives. Abraham, Abraham tells his servant, you know, to go and find a wife from his relatives. This was a tall order. This wasn't easy. It would be like looking for a needle in a haystack. But Abraham was determined to obey God's instructions and wanted his servant to promise that he too was going to follow the instructions <clears throat> in following a wife for his son. So the servant left in obedience and kept his master's instructions. And he accomplished the impossible task. It really was. It was a very difficult task. He found the right place. He went on this journey. By the way, it was a 500-mile journey. He went on this journey. <clears throat> he found the right place, the right family, and the right woman, Rebecca. And, <clears throat> excuse me, because he was led by God. It's so important for us when we make a decision, whatever it is, to be led by God. And so he accomplished the impossible task. Now, he said that a number of times that God was leading. He praised God in verse 27. Yes, the Lord had led me on the journey. When he shared with Rebecca's parents, he said, the Lord led me on the right road, <clears throat> verse 38. It was clear to him that God was leading him on this journey because he was following the instructions of his master and he was also following the instructions of God's word. God will guide us as a church, as individuals, when we are determined to keep God's word and follow his guidance. So the first principle is we need to take knowledge of God's word and his instructions. We have a lot there to guide us, to direct us. Now, let's look at the second principle that we could find in this story and learn Abra what Abraham and his servant did. <clears throat> principle number two, take steps to fulfill God's will. I'll repeat that. Take steps to fulfill God's will. Abraham understood this. So he didn't sit idly and wait for God to bring him a wife or his son. No. He does his part and takes appropriate action. In his case, he begins to look for a wife for his son, Isaac, and recruits his faithful servant his trusted servant to be part of this plan. Abraham took steps to see that his son will get a wife from his own people. He did not sit idly and wait for God to bring someone to, to him. You know, it never, it never has been that way in Scripture. To see God's, God's will being fully, simply, by waiting passively for it to happen. That's not what we find in this story. That's not what Abraham or his servant did. 
You know, but somehow, <clears throat> that's how many believers are still believing. Since it's God's will, he will surely do it. Some people seem to think that receiving God's guidance means doing nothing. Nothing is automatic. We need to put feet to our faith and start walking. Yes, Abraham's servant and his caravan of, of camels loaded with goods and loaded with gifts traveled 500 miles. 500 miles. That is a long ways. So, Abraham understood this. He believes in God's sovereignty. He believes in God's plan. And yet he decides to come up with an action plan. It was not an easy one. They had to go to the town of Naor that was 500 miles away. You know, our search committee is following this example, taking steps necessary to find a senior pastor. How? They're looking at resumes. They're looking at sermons. They're watching sermons. They're gathering information so they can make a good decision. They're not sitting idle. And so it's important for us, like our search committee, like Abraham's servant, to, in faith, get into action, to receive results and success. <clears throat> by, <clears throat> excuse me, by obeying God's word and taking the necessary steps, you know, God will grant us success. He'll come through for us as well. The third principle that we find in this story is, number three, pray for God's wisdom and intervention. If you have something you, you want, you have to decide on, an important decision, prayer and ask for wisdom <coughs> excuse me, and intervention. The servant realizes that this is a divine opportunity. And what does he do? He prays for success and guidance in verses 12 to 14. <coughs> then he prayed. What did he do? Then he prayed, Lord, God of my master Abraham, make me successful today and show kindness to my master Abraham. See, I am standing beside this spring. And the daughters of the town's people are coming out to draw water. May it be that when I say to a young woman, please let down your jar that I may have a drink. And she says, drink and I'll water your camels too. Let her be the one you have chosen for your servant Isaac. <clears throat> By this, I will know that you have chosen, shown kindness to my master. You know, many Christians today miss God's guidance and divine opportunities because they do not pray. Often we go through life making decisions based on our own wisdom. We need to pray for God's wisdom. If we are to receive guidance, pray for wisdom. James chapter 1, verse 5 reads, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. We need to recognize we need to recognize that we do not, do not have all the wisdom to direct our own paths and to make the best choices. Abraham's servant prayed for what only God could do. He prayed for divine intervention. You know, some people see things happen. Some people make things happen. <clears throat> he has God to make things happen. He was bold in asking God to intervene. He just made an outrageous prayer. I mean, he is setting up the scene for God to act. 
This is what I have done, he says to the Lord. I have traveled 500 miles <clears throat> to look or search for a wife for my master's sin. <clears throat> what he's telling them here, now you do your part, Lord. And God did. Praise God. We need to, ourselves, if we're searching for God's guidance and his direction, I think we need to be bold in coming to the throne of God with confidence. Because Satan will do all in his power to discourage you, thinking you're not good enough to come to God boldly. Some people don't like to boldly come because he says that because he wants us to come. He knows the obstacles that Satan puts in our path. So he says, come boldly to the throne of grace. <clears throat> Hebrews 4 and 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain, obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So after we pray boldly, we are to trust that God will act. And this is the fourth principle. We heard this last week. How important when we pray, it's important to believe that God's going to come through. So, principle number four in this story, trust God, that, trust that God is going to act. It is important to note that the servant got what he was searching for because he trusted God. Trust is not a passive word, though. <clears throat> There's a lot the servant had to do. And he got what he asked for, success. God granted him on this search, success. He trusted that God would act. God would come through. We need to do the same. When we take appropriate actions to do God's will, we can experience God's help and blessing. You know, God is help, happy to help us to fulfill our needs. And it makes sense. He is most glad to see that his will is done. He wants to give us the success in whatever it is we need guidance in. So we need to trust. The trust is absolute, absolutely essential if we are to be led by God because we will never maintain our commitment to obeying him and waiting on him unless we really trust him. You must trust that he will provide everything necessary to fulfill his will in your life, in his own way, though. This is what Abraham did. He trusted God to providentially provide a wife for Isaac from outside of Cana, even though that was really difficult. Abraham states his trust in God in verse 7. The Lord, the God of heaven, who brought me out of my father's household and my native land, and who spoke to me and promised me on oath, saying <clears throat> to your offspring, I will give this land. He will send his angel before you so that you can get a wife for my son from there. In verse 7, this verse we're looking at here, Abraham, Abraham recounts that God had made promises that included the land of Canaan and offspring. Since God made that promise, Abraham expects God to keep it by supplying a wife for his son, Isaac. His trust and confidence is based on God's specific word and promise, not on personal desire. Many people express trust in God, but their trust is that God will provide what they want and they desire. God honors trust in his word. There are so many promises, beautiful promises to guide us, to help us in God's word. God honors trust when we trust in his word and his promises. And like we've seen in this story, he'll come through. Abraham believes that God will provide a wife for Isaac 
on this trip. What are the chances? As we look at this story, I was reading this story. What are the chances that Abraham's servant can travel 500 miles, meet a qualified woman from Abraham's own family, and convince her, convince this young lady and her family to let her travel to a distant land and marry a man that she has not met, her parents have not met as well. I mean, nevertheless, in verse 7, Abraham clearly expects God to do just this. By sending an angel to providentially guide and provide. He is not trusting in his own understanding and insight. But, you know, is rather trusting in God's word and God's promise that he was going to do this. This trust is essential in being directed by God. As this story shows, and the Bible also says in Proverbs, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. We will not be directed by God unless we are committed to him and trust in him to provide for our needs. You know, whether the issue, I don't know there's what you need guidance in, whether the issue be in marriage, for your family, marriage situation, whether it be in ministry, whether it be in a career, you want guidance in a career, something, or you're going to relocate somewhere, <clears throat> or our search committee, or some life issue. We must trust. We must trust God to supernaturally, providentially arrange the circumstances at the right time and at the right way. God will do it like he did for Abraham and his servant. So I don't know what issues are here this morning, but I do know this, that if we trust God and we claim these promises, God will answer and he will guide you. He will direct you in whatever area of your life you need guidance. That is so important. You know, something else I picked up here. In verse 8, Abraham acknowledges that it might not happen the way he expects. Is there? It might not happen the way he expects. If this woman is unwilling to come back with you, then you will be released from this oath of mine. Only do not take my son back. You know, this isn't lack of faith. Just an acknowledgement. This is an acknowledgement that God might provide a different manner than Abraham expects. And we have to be open to that too. God might have a better plan. We know that Abraham still expects God to come through to provide a wife and fulfill the promise of offspring because he restates his commitment that Isaac will not go back to his relatives, homeland. One way or another, God will provide. It might not come out the way you want, but it's always be best for us if we follow his way. I found this in my life. I needed guidance in many of my decisions in marriage, decisions in work. You know, God will guide, but you need to trust him. Yes. Now, so far, I have shared with you four principles that we could take out of this story. The first principle for receiving guidance, knowledge and obedience of God's word. God has many things in his word, promises, to guide us, to direct us. Secondly, the second principle for receiving guidance is to take the necessary steps to fulfill God's will, God's word. You can't just sit back. Oh, he's going to do it. I asked, it's going to happen. Sometimes we need to take the appropriate steps. 
<clears throat> like I've, met, I've known people that pray for something and they expect, they don't wanna, they expect to do nothing. No, we need to do something. We need to put faith. We have faith. Faith is seen what? In obedience. We step out in faith. So that's very important. <clears throat> what was the third step? Pray for God's wisdom and intervention. God will intervene. God will, whatever you need guidance in, he will intervene. He will help you. He wants to help you, but you have to seek him in prayer and ask him for wisdom because we need the wisdom to make the right decision. <clears throat> but he will intervene. <clears throat> Excuse me. The fourth principle for receiving guidance, and it goes with the uh, third one, prayer, and then trust. Trust God that he will act, that he will come through for you. In faith, expect God's best. Abraham's servant not only trusted God, he expected God to come through. That's faith. So whatever issue we are facing, it could be at home. It could be at work. It could be here in the church. Whatever issue, expect God to come through for you. <clears throat> Pray and trust God. Last week we heard the ABCs of prayer. Ask. What was the second one? Believe. Claim the promise. You know that God's promises? The answer is in the promise. His promises are enabling. So we need to thank him beforehand. And he will answer. That's trust. Faith in God's promises. So, whatever the issue is, I don't know what issue you're facing, what decision you need to make, <clears throat> Trust in God, and he will guide us individually and corporately as a church. That's what I found in this story. I found that God wants to guide us, but most people, they trust in their own wisdom. And uh, they don't go to God, to his word, full of promises. And they don't take the necessary steps. They, oh, it's going to fall on me. I asked for this. No. We need to take steps like they did. Prayer is so important. Pray. And for wisdom, because we need the wisdom. And thirdly, fourthly, trust. God will do it. <clears throat> So God bless you. My prayer is that I know there's needs here. That God will bless us in whatever and guide us in whatever decision we need to make. God promises to do that and he will do it. God bless you.